Hello everybody, Father Stephen Imbrato, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Coming to you from Florida, overcast day. I'm heading out right after the live cast to celebrate Mass at a Pregnancy Resource Center next to an abortion mill in Altamonte Springs. It is the 19th anniversary of my priestly ordination. And every year I try to do something unique and different on my ordination anniversary. Uh, for instance, four years ago, I got arrested. All right. Uh, I think it was... Three years ago, five years ago, I was in court, right, for getting arrested. Um, so I, I really try to do something unique and different for each of my uh, uh, anniversary dates for my ordination. Again, 19 years ordained to the priesthood, 20 years ordained altogether. Uh, so I thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the blessings that he has given me. Now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, please share this video. Uh, I'm being somewhat shadow banned by social media, so if you could share this video, I'd really appreciate it. And of course, go to protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can access YouTube through protestchildkilling.com. You can access YouTube. You can access Rumble. You can access all my social media platforms, uh, X and Instagram and every social media platform, I think even LinkedIn. And then of course, uh, all my campaigns, all of my ministries, which are varied, numerous, uh, Repent Ireland, Repent, RallyForPersonhood.com, TheMensMarch.com, uh, and so, uh, yes, protestchildkilling.com. All the URLs we talk about are all at protestchildkilling.com. So thank you. And again, thank you all for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. Hit the notification so they let you know when I am premiering a new live cast, live stream, or daily sacrifice, holy sacrifice of the Mass, or some talk that I am giving. Again, I'm Father Stephen Abrado of protestchildkilling.com. Now, the title of today's live stream is I'm Sick, Angry, Disgusted. Now, I'm not physically sick, you can see, even though I have my morning sniffles every morning, uh, and I apologize for that. Of course, people send me all kinds of allergy remedies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yes, thank you, Victoria. My mother, Mary, please heal us. I'm feeling pretty good, though. I just get these sniffles in the morning for whatever reason. Uh, so why am I disgusted, sick, angry over the mainstream corporate pro-life movement? Now, you guys might say, well, nothing new with that, Father. You're always upset over the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, the leadership of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement. Yes. But every single time they do something additionally disingenuous, I am uh, get more angry, more sick, more disgusted. And of course, last night they had a live stream and it's a progression in this live stream. So David B. Wright and Michael Kenny last week or yeah, I think it was last week, uh, maybe two weeks ago, had a live stream about these 11 videos that they have put together that supposedly are unified message that's going to change the whole messaging perspective of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, when in essence, it's the same old nonsense. It's just the same old nonsense. And then all of a sudden, they started promoting the other day, and they had 3,000 people on this live stream last night, sponsored by all of these pro-life leaders. Lo and behold, all these pro-life leaders are the same pro-life leaders that are going to be in Washington, D.C. on June 22nd at their Celebrate Life uh, uh, 
extravaganza with a big gala, fundraising gala the night before. And actually, it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I think half Sunday event. Uh, lots of pro-life leaders. It's a conference. It's a gala. It's a rally. Um, and and so th this this cutting edge, this this it's a doc it's it's really um an infomercial uh that they had last night is nothing more than a promotional video for the event on June 22nd where they are now in the process of kicking off this new uh propaganda campaign this new marketing campaign this new promotional campaign, these 11 videos. And again, last week I did a video on these, this marketing campaign, this, and, and it's nothing new, nothing new under the sun. The videos are marginally well done. Um, definitely, I think, not up to the same level as some of the stuff that live action puts out, Kristen Hawkins puts out from Susan B. Uh, uh, Students for Life of America, Susan B. Anthony. Individually, I think the groups uh, uh, put out some really high tech, uh, uh, very well done. Uh, marketing videos and memes and, and everything. I mean, they're very good at what they do. What they do is wrong. And when I say that's wrong, it's because they're not united by any means. It's every organization for themselves. And now this every organization for themselves who have all come together to say, yes, we're going to buy into these uh, 11 videos uh, we're going to focus on promoting for the next month, five weeks, this event, this Celebrate Life event, this conference in Washington, D.C. for the benefit of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement that has no interest in abolishing abortion. No interest in abolishing abortion abolishing abortion. No interest, no talk of demanding the Supreme Court recognize constitutional person from the moment of conception. If there's one thing that the mainstream corporate pro-life movement should be organizing around and focused on, it is the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment that says no state can deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process, nor can any state deprive any person of equal protection under the law. That very simple phrase that I have memorized, in which really the Supreme Court has a moral obligation, a constitutional obligation, to define when do we obtain this inalienable right that allows us to be constitutional persons that cannot be taken away without due process, cannot be, uh, that guarantees us equal protection under the law. This statement in the 14th Amendment, these guarantees, when did we all, all of us are constitutional persons here in the United States. Every person in the United States is a constitutional person. They may not be citizens, Let's make that distinction because prior to this personhood phrase, proclamation in the 14th Amendment, it talks about citizens, right? But citizens is, is different than persons. Every person in the United States, every human being in the United States is a person. And yes, citizens have certain rights that go beyond what every person may have, but every person has basic rights and every person's basic rights are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness that cannot be taken away without due process. So in other words, you know, you just can't go around killing illegal immigrants, right? Because they have the inalienable right to life endowed by their creator. A pregnant woman who's an illegal alien, steps over the border and somebody shoots her and kills her and her baby, 
There's two homicides there in almost every state, two homicides, two murders, right? Well, that baby in the womb and that mother who died, both of them, when did they obtain the inalienable right to life? When they stepped over the border? No, they're still not citizens. They obtained that inalienable right to life from the moment of conception. And it can't be taken away without due process. They can't just be shot. They're guaranteed equal protection under the law, not because they're citizens or immigrants, because they're persons. Under our Constitution, they're persons. And they're guaranteed life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness that cannot be taken away without due process and also it guarantees them equal protection under the law. So they can't be, they can't be deported without due process. They can't be uh, uh, treated differently, all right, because uh, of, of their status, right? One of the problems is, is they are being treated differently. They'd be giving more benefits than citizens in the United States, all right? But again, the mainstream corporate pro-life movement is not interested in talking about equal protection under the law unconditionally, unconditionally. There are some people in the mainstream corporate pro-life leadership that may be of the mind that equal protection under the law is unconditional, but almost all of them are hesitant to criminalize any women who murder their babies even though those babies are guaranteed equal protection under the law. Now, those rights are being denied, these pre-born babies, but the Constitution guarantees them equal protection under the law, according to the 14th Amendment. But right now, this country, we are denying these babies equal protection. The Supreme Court of the United States is denying these babies equal protection under the law. And the Supreme Court of the United States is allowing their mass murder. So this is a constitutional crisis. Now, you won't ever hear the mainstream corporate pro-life leadership talk the way I'm talking right now. You will never hear them talk about constitutional crisis, national emergency, right? The excluded class, pre-born children, the excluded class, the excluded constitutional class are being mass murdered. That the Supreme Court is allowing pre-born to be excluded, denied their constitutional rights, and being mass murdered. That indeed, the Supreme Court needs to recognize person from the moment of conception, saying that in the 14th Amendment, indeed, it applies to Babies in the womb from the moment of conception. So you're not hearing anyone talk this way, all right? Not any of the leaders of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, nor in this live stream, which I'm not done seeing, but I think the live stream is exactly a duplicate, maybe with some celebrities thrown in, some pro-life celebrities thrown in to endorse this live stream, this infomercial, and endorse the, the June 22nd event in California because they're a part of it. But you won't hear any of them talk in this way, the way I'm talking right now. So this infomercial happened last night. I'm in the process of watching it, and tomorrow I'll talk more about it. Okay, now, let's, uh, let's go to some contradictions. All right. And again, the mainstream corporate pro-life movement is full of contradictions. So on X this morning, I came across this. All right. Kristen Hawkins posted this pro-choice Christian pastor believes morality is relative. Yikes. All right. So she's in, in this interview and with this Christian pastor who absolutely positively thinks that morality is relative. OK, so that's absolutely wrong. Uh, and Kristen Hawkins uh, saying uh, that uh, that he's wrong is right, except that Kristen Hawkins and all the other leaders of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement also think 
that morality is relative. Not by word. They'll always say the right things. But what do they believe? What do they back? What do they support? 15-week bans? Is it a 15-week ban, moral relativism? Is it exceptions, moral relativism? Is it even a six-week ban, moral relativism? Sure. What is the moral absolute here? Catechism 2270. Human life begins at conception. At the moment of conception, a human being becomes a human person and must be protected, right, from the moment of conception, right? Their lives must be protected. So I said, so the strategies of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement leadership in bed with the Republicans is not relativism, please. There is only one absolute, abolish abortion through recognition of personhood from conception. It's the only moral absolute. And you can go to rallyforpersonhood.com, rallyforpersonhood.com that you can, you can access through protestchildkilling.com. If you go to protestchildkilling.com, look to the right and you'll see the link right there for rallyforpersonhood.com. All right, so that's Kristen Hawkins. I think 11 or 12 years ago, 14 years ago, I, I gave first communion to my youngest granddaughter. Okay. So now, Kristen Hawkins also posts, Donald Trump has said he will soon announce his position on chemical abortion pills. To address Democrats' abuse of federal power, Trump should take these steps in a second term. Make key appointments. Vice Presidency to Health and Human Services. I already said I'd like to see Sarah Huckabee be vice president, all right? Demand Environmental Protection Agency track forever chemicals of chemical abortion. Require FDA to do clean water and endangered species testing. Champion health and safety standards for persons for in-person care. Uh, instruct the Drug Administration Agency and the Federal Trade to address the illegal online abortion Right, end the Justice Department's attacks against cut taxpayer funds. How about abolishing chemical abortions? How about just abolishing abortion? How about recognizing constitutional person from the moment of conception? Come on, Kristen. This is your wish list of Trump that you're giving Trump, you're a leader of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement and nowhere there? Are you telling President Trump to abolish chemical abortions? 15-week ban with exceptions won't do it. Abolish chemical abortions, why? Why though? Because they're unconstitutional. Every abortion is unconstitutional. Every abortion violates the 14th Amendment. Every abortion violates equal protection under the law for the preborn. Abolish all abortions because abortions are murder. Abortions are unconstitutional. You're not hearing this, though, from any of the pro-life leaders. I thought I had... No. Nope. So the same thing I saw, secular pro-life, live action. I thought that uh, I saved all of them, screenshots. Uh, I guess they haven't popped up on my laptop yet. But if you go through Twitter, if you go through social media, in post after post after post, you see, first of all, a very diluted message, a very scattered message, right? Oh, so Abby Johnson, for instance, uh, uh, posted that she'll never compromise her faith for political purposes. So thank God, right? That's exactly what she be, should be saying, all right? Uh, however, 
Every mainstream corporate pro-life leader absolutely does it. Because one of the reasons why they're not promoting constitutional person from the moment of conception is because they believe that that's a political strategy that will lose at the polls in November. And I was talking to somebody yesterday and, and I was thinking that, you know what? Our political strategy should be, we'll wait till 28 constitutional person from the moment of conception now politically will wait till 28. That constitutional person from the moment of conception, if it costs us the 2024 election, so be it. So be it. We'll wait till 28. But we're going to stand on the moral absolute of constitutional person from the moment of conception. We're going to stand on the moral absolute that babies from the moment of conception are constitutional persons and must be protected. And if it costs us in 2024, so be it. So be it. That's a constitutional absolute. That's a moral absolute. So don't tell me or tell everyone that you don't compromise your faith, your moral principles for political purposes, when absolutely, positively, that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. That's why I'll vote for Trump against Biden. For those two seconds, I'll hold my nose and pull that lever. But that's not my moral obligation. My moral obligation is to proclaim the moral absolute, the constitutional absolute, that these babies have an alienable right to life endowed by their creator from the moment of conception, and that those rights need to be recognized. Those, those rights can no longer be denied. We can no longer mass murder these babies, that this is a constitutional crisis. That is the political absolute. That is the moral absolute. That is the constitutional absolute. And to not speak about that, to not stand on that for any reason, but mostly because you think it's a losing issue in November, it's political idolatry. That's exactly what it is. You're putting political expediency. And, and again, it's not like... It's not like, and, and again, Kristen Hawkins showed us clearly, right? It's not like we think that, that Trump's going to abolish abortion, although I think that the, the best chance of abolishing abortion from a president comes from Trump because he was going to do the presidential executive order on personhood, but the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, again, did not jump on board with that. So that went to waste, right? That opportunity we had in Trump's first term went to waste because the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, again, did not want to jump on constitutional person from the moment of conception, demand that Trump... Uh, 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 proclaim a uh, person who from the moment of conception is a presidential executive order, close the abortion mills, recognize person and prosecute abortionist, right? Get the injunction, let it go to the Supreme Court and let the Supreme Court be forced to determine when indeed all of us obtain our constitutional rights of equal protection under the law, our inalienable right to life and doubt by our creator. And that's what, no matter what, we should be demanding. That's what we should be hearing from Lila Rose. That's what we should be hearing from Kristen Hawkins, from Abby Johnson, from David B. Wright, from Michael Kenny, from Lauren Mazuka, from Sean Carney. Every mainstream corporate pro-life leader should be proclaiming this. Supreme Court of the United States, we demand that you tell us when all of us have obtained our constitutional right to life that guarantees us equal protection under the law. Answer that question. Every pro-life leader should be demanding the Supreme Court answer that question. When did we all receive our inalienable right to life endowed by our creator that can't be taken away without due process and guarantees us equal protection under the law. When? Answer that question. At birth? Six weeks in the womb? 15 weeks in the womb? When? 
But you don't hear any mainstream corporate pro-life leader asking that question. And so you have all this hype. The infomercial last week, the infomercial last night, the big infomercial that's going to happen in Washington, D.C. on June 22nd. Look at us. Send us your money. Big gala the night before, big conference for three or four days. The the very wealthy, high-profile pro-lifers, look at us. Send us your money, right? We we care about the pre-born. We care about this issue of abortion. Well, none of them... None of them as of right now. And again, the reason why I'm on this, this, this soapbox, the reason why I'm on this, this, this bully pulpit right now is to get them come June 22nd. One or two of them or all of them demand the Supreme Court answer the simple question of when we receive our inalienable right to life endowed by our creator that cannot be taken without due process and guarantees us equal protection under the law. When, Supreme Court, why are you denying constitutional rights of the pre-born? Why are you denying their constitutional rights? Why are you excluding them from the Constitution? Why are you allowing them to be mass murdered? Why are you allowing this constitutional crisis to continue? Supreme Court, we want you to answer these questions. So we don't hear any of the mainstream corporate pro-life leaders talking like this, using this terminology. Will they on June 22nd? Based on the infomercials that we saw last week and this week, and the promotion, the 11 videos that are being put out there, we're not going to hear it. We're not, and that's what makes me angry, disgusted, and sick. Father Stephen Abrado, protest, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. From protestchildkilling.com, you can get rallyforpersonhood.com. At rallyforpersonhood.com. Uh, uh, at rallyforpersonhood.com, you can get everything that I'm talking about. It's all there. Videos, talking points. There's a petition you can sign. Rallyforpersonhood.com. Please go there. Our Lady of America.com, uh, the uh, approved USCCB private devotion. We haven't prayed yet. Let's get our prayers done. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to you about uh, the Rock. No, let me talk to you about Rochester. So, in, in D.C., the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, all the mainstream corporate leaders are going to be in D.C. with a big gala, big conference, fundraising gala, big rally, Lincoln Memorial, right? We're going to be the abolitionists, the pro-life abolitionists, the Catholic abolitionists are going to be in Rochester, New York, home of Frederick Douglass. Rochester, New York, on Saturday, June 22nd. The night before, Friday night, we'll pray. We'll have a night of prayer and reflection and preparation for the next day. Big difference. Mainstream corporate pro-life movement is going to have a big fundraising gala. The night before, we'll be all praying. They'll have thousands. We'll have hundreds. Doesn't matter. Gideon had 300, right? Started with 10,000. Ended up with 300, still won the day. Because with God, all things are possible. They'll have thousands, we'll have hundreds. We'll pray the night before. They'll have a fundraising gala the night before. And then they will have a Celebrate Life rally on Saturday, June 22nd. And we'll have a rally for personhood to abolish abortion. That's what we'll have. In the home of Frederick Douglass, the hometown of Frederick Douglass, Rochester, New York. Go to pro, uh, pro, uh, themensmarch.com, themensmarch.com. All these URLs you can get at protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. All right, today the saint of the day is St. Matthias. This is the 19th anniversary of my ordination. I was ordained on the Feast of St. Matthias. And St. John Chrysostom says, as the leader of the apostles, Peter always took the initiative in speaking, but he left the decision to all of them. But it was Peter who presented the idea, pointing out that it was not his own, but had been suggested to him by spiritual, pro scriptural prophecy. So St. Matthias interceded for us. They cast lots. Lot fell to Matthias, who was then added to the 11. Why? Because he was with them from the beginning. From the beginning, he was a witness to all things from the beginning. St. Matthias, intercede for us. 
Let's uh, do our prayers. Name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's invoke St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast and tell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs. Mourning and weep in this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, his eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided, inspired with this confidence. We fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother, to you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer us. Amen. May the divine assistance remain with us forever. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let's now pray for all those who have uh, physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, cancer, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, clinical depression, suicidal ideation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the Church, and remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Joseph, St. Matthias, St. Stephen, intercede for the Pope, all bishops and all priests, especially in our hour of need. Our Lady of Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world and the end to abortion. Amen. Again, our daily offering, offer up our entire day, our work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time. Offer it up to our Lord, united to our Lord on the cross and ask him to shed his mercy upon all of our personal intentions, family intentions, health intentions, ministerial, vocational intentions, the intentions of all those who we said we were praying for, including those who may forget to pray for, for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each and every single day. And uh, all of our intentions, as I'm going to be putting those intentions out there verbally at my Mass at the Pregnancy Resource Center's Life Choices Pregnancy Resource Center next to All Women's Health Clinic, the Killing Center in Altamonte Springs. I'm celebrating Mass there uh, at the, uh, the Life Choices Pregnancy Center, their chapel. I do it every month. What an honor it is. St. Joseph, my patron saint, son of St. Joseph, born on March 19th, intercede for us. Amen. So again, the mensmarch.com, the mensmarch.com for all the information about our June 22nd Rochester, New York abolition event to abolish abortion through personhood. Again, rally for personhood.com. They all these URLs, all these websites, again at protestchildkilling.com. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Also, don't forget to pray for the Red Rose Rescuers. That have been, Not the Red Rose Rescuers. I'm sorry. Some of them are Red Rose Rescues, but it wasn't a Red Rose Rescue. Uh, but these rescuers that are being sentenced yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we have 21 rescuers that are in jail or facing jail time. Um, so please pray for them. Pray for all these rescuers. Again, my friends, go out into the world, give them heaven, check out my mask later, share this video when share per group, my YouTube channel, all right, you can access through protestchildkilling.com. Go out into the world, my friends, and give them heaven.